Hello, this is Saka the Bean, and today we are going over, we are continuing with the Bellaverse, the SCP canon about the world if the SCP Foundation were to be completely plunged into essentially um, back to medieval times with sword and sorcery sort of stuff going on. But with the SCPs and and stuff like that still being in existence, and the SCP Foundation itself being a being a legend, wherein a lot of the staff members are actually the pantheon of deities. I won't explain any further because you should have already known that from the first part. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. We are reading about the Seeker today. Sender was based, was blessed of old Aggie. His seven daughters and twenty-one granddaughters were proof of that. But now, standing before the statue of the goddess, he can't help but tremble inwardly. He was, after all, going to his death. Sender pushed a long Long lock of thin gray hair back on his head, washing his genitals in the pool of water at the statue's base. I don't know why that was necessary to talk about in any way, and turned, kissing his fingers and pressing them to the statue's lips, begging forgiveness for sins against his family and protection for the road ahead, knowing that only one of those prayers would be answered. The stone had fallen to him, um, after all. Sender bowed his head in a final supplication and stepped out of the water, turning and walking into the white sands that surround a short squat hut building. He wrapped a length of cloth around his head and took out a round small pebble that had decided his fate. He cast in the air, letting it fall to the earth, and looked to look at it carefully, squinting at the arrow carved into it. He picked it up again, showing the supply of water that would not last him more than a week, and walked into the desert following it. When he came upon the ruins of the first homes, those oldest ones which were now abandoned, he rested. He should have known better, especially since the ghosts of the dead are always close in the desert. But he didn't care. He was tired, his feet were blistered, and night had been upon him for hours, and he felt lonely. Sender had slept beside his wife for thirty-eight years, and now he felt naked and cold without her warmth. He closed his eyes, tried not to listen to the voices in his head, but he heard a different one entirely. You are old, sender of the Oma. Why do you walk this desert? His eyes opened quickly, turning and looking, seeing a butterfly resting on the edge of the wall. He leaned in up, then lowered himself, his forehead touching the ground. Lord, you honor me. The voice did not continue to speak, said across inwardly when he realized that he had not answered the question. <clears throat> I am the new seeker, my lord. The lot fell to me, and being of a great many daughters, I was sent in spite of my age. The voice was again silent, but when Senator raised his head, he saw that the butterfly had taken flight, wafting through the air like a weep, like leaf. He grabbed his pouch of water, his bag, and hurried, following it deeper into the desert, deeper into the cold night. The butterfly seemed to flick away into nothing when he crested the hill, but Sender didn't notice. He was instead silent. Very, very silent. Before him stretched a ruin, unlike any he had seen before, and Sender had been a traveler in his youth, tasted the dead waters to the north, seen the walls to the south, but this... It stretched for ages, maybe miles, maybe further. It was made of metal, or somehow, and stone, and parts of it it hurt to look at. And with a prayer of thanks and supplication on his lips, Sender dropped to the ground and closed his eyes. He had found it. Hundreds of seekers lost to the desert, and he had found it. Sterile's tomb, the home site to, 
the city of the gods. By your will, O oh great ones, I have been guided here. Truly, I am blessed of Agi. I am blessed of Drakgin. I am blessed of Sterile. Thank you. And had Sender taken his blessing and taken it and run back home, he would have lived out the rest of his days as a saint and priest. But he did not. Sender stepped over the sharp stones, wincing slightly as he did so. His feet were aged by the desert and tougher than and leather, but these stones were painfully sharp. He finally reached the wall, his hands grabbing and scrabbling for purchase, so he pulled himself up and on top of the outlying structure. Inside it was cooler already, by the will of the gods, and as Cinder dropped into the cracked court lot, right, he found a sense of ease watch over him. The gods had allowed him entry, surely he was blessed as of them, to the point of being the next prophet, perhaps. This was, after all, no vision. This was real. He walked towards the large, open doors and stepped into them, smiling, not even noticing the cuts in the floor or the lingering smell of sulfur. He walked into the building, feeling his spirit lift as he gazed up at the seemingly endless ceilings and the deep corridors off either side of it, the endlessly twisting room. He walked down it, closing a door at random and marking the entrance with his stone, then entering it. He explored, finding the works of the gods littered and skewed about the room, laying broken and destroyed. He sighed, turning to leave as he realized the true treasures would be far deeper in the city. As he turned to leave, Yvette, he bent to pick up his rock and found it missing. His eyes stared at the floor, looking for it, realizing he'd foolishly discarded his mark of office and purpose. Then he heard it. It was a roar, but unlike any he had ever heard. It sounded worse than those the demons made when they were butchered. And it was quite close, he feared. So he did what every coward who knows he is going to die does. He ran. Sender's legs were old and tired, but the desert makes strong folk, and he could run. The doors were gone, gone to whatever ancient sense such things, things as displease him, and Sender instead ran for a different path, hoping that somehow he would be given exit, that the gods would forgive him, even though he knew that they would not. He hurried and ran, deeper and deeper, hearing the walls hurting and crashing behind him, breaking into nothing as he heard the thing's voice calling to him. Cinder, it murmured, a voice that somehow echoed and surrounded him. Sterile's tomb was huge, infinitely long, and full of twists and turns. He was given short moments of joy when he thought he'd escaped, followed by deep moments of fear and sorrow, uh, and sorrow as he realized he did not. Who knows how long Cinder fled the beast? Only that it was not long enough in his mind. He ran and ran, and finally fell, turning and looking at the beast, its great maw opening and splitting into four parts, its terrible teeth easily pushing into his skin and through it. He screamed loudly as to Kate and Cinder, or screamed and screamed. But the gods wouldn't hear them, and there he died, learning too late that the blessing of one god is the curse of another. The old man's toothy grin looked as terrifying. Look, uh, looked also as terrifying as his story had sounded, and the children quickly fled while the old man laughed loudly, slapping his knees and coughing as his laughing fit caught up to him. He turned to leave until a small voice caught him. But was it? What was it that Cinder found? They asked. The story teller turned, looking at the small, deeply tanned boy, no older than twelve. What did he find? the man asked. Why, Egypt, 
He found just what he thought he, he found. The home of Saitu, the city of the gods, Steril's tomb. The little boy shifted on his feet some, licking his cracked lips. So, was he blessed? He asked. The old man smiled cr across his face again. Of course not, he said, laughing. He was cursed, and there are some secrets no one should have to discover. But, the little boy continued, he found the home site too. Isn't that a blessing? The old man's eyes narrowed at the boy as he realized the trip out would not be swayed. What is your name, boy? he asked. The boy narrowed his eyes for, just for a moment. Never tell your name to one who hides it, he said. The ancient man laughed loudly. Wise boy, follower of York, are we? He asked and smiled and nodded his own question. I have caught Benadam, he said. The boy nodded. My friends call me Round. Well, my Round, come, let me tell you a tale of York. Ever heard of the have you ever heard of the story of the ape god Robert and the wires of life? Yes, turning about and walking, the boy followed him quickly and hanging on to every word. And that was the seeker. <sighs> this might have been a little bit shorter than most videos, but I think it was a good one. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Who knows what I'm doing tomorrow? So until then, goodbye!